Excellent. What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is called The Trouble with RGB LEDs. And if you think the trouble with RGB LEDs is that they exist at all, then this video is probably not for you because uh, I'm not going to be saying no one should have RGB LEDs. In fact, I'm going to be advocating for them to some degree, but also uh, advocating having the right up and proper amount of control over them. So uh, for that purpose, I have a, a, some brief demos here to show you. I'm gonna explain a little bit more fundamentally how uh, RGB LEDs actually work. Um, how you can get the vast variety of different colors out of them um, by using uh, motherboard software control or an actual controller that might be included within RGB LED kits. And then finally, uh, a feature that I believe to my knowledge so far is exclusive to gigabyte boards with this current round of Z270 stuff that's come out, which is the addition of a fifth pin connection for the RGB LED strips themselves, which gives you the ability to do not just RGB, but RGBW, including a specific channel just for white or RGB UV um, using that uh, other specific channel for UV lighting. I'm not a big fan of UV lighting, but some people are. Uh, what I do like is being able to get the actual pure white out of the RGB LEDs because often when you try to take uh, a motherboard or an RGB LED and set it to white, you get more of a bluish tone because what's, what it's actually do, doing is using the three diodes, that's what LED stands for, is light emitting diode, and every RGB LED has three of them. Uh, at least if it's RGB. One is red, one is green, one is blue. So for a more precise explanation of how these RGB LEDs work, why don't I just plug this one in right here? Uh, basically, you have a 12 volt connection and uh, LEDs can operate on either 12 volts or five volts. So double check, um, A lot of the, most of the motherboards that have headers on them, like this uh, Gigabyte Z170X Gaming 7 or Aorus Z170X Gaming 7, um, actually has the pinouts on the motherboard and a 12 volt connection. Um, some of the kits that you might buy off of eBay or something like that might be five volts, so do double check that. Now, each actual light that's on this strip, and they're spaced out fairly evenly, uh, is referred to as a 50-50 LED. That's uh, specifically referring to the size, which is five millimeters by five millimeters. And then each light here actually has three diodes within it. Each of those diodes receives a signal coming down the cable, and that's why there's three other plugs besides the actual 12 volt signal coming through. Um, and then the three connections provide data that tells each little diode how bright to be. So you have actually 256 levels of brightness from zero to 255. And that is because um, the way computers primarily work is communicating via bytes. Uh, a byte is eight bits. So if you've ever adjusted color using a computer, then uh, you might have been presented with something like the color wheel uh, that Gigabyte has provided here in their RGB Fusion software. Uh, now the color wheel allows you to visually just choose which color you want anything to be, but if you look at the RGB numbers there, uh, you'll notice that there is a number from zero to, one, er, zero to 255 on each one. So again, 256 different values that that can be, and by providing a different level of brightness to the red, the green, and the blue outputs, uh, those actual diodes on the LED strip will be brighter or darker. Combine those all together and you will end up with the color. So for instance, if we wanted all blue, we can have something like that, which is 0, 0, 255. If we wanted all red, kind of the same thing, uh, 255, 0, 0. All green, 0, 255, 0. Now you can actually do a little bit of math here and figure out why these all are as they should be because because computers typically communicate in bytes. A byte is eight bits, and each bit can have two states that it can be in, a zero or a one. So if you take two to the eighth power, indicating each of those separate states that each bit in a byte can be, you end up with 256. And um, if you've ever used computers before, you probably see this number all the time because it is frequently, frequently used as a power of two. So going back over to our RGB software here, um, each of those, a single byte of data can be, can be transmitted to tell each diode what color it should be and what brightness, I'm sorry, not what color it should be, but what brightness it sh should be. Right now, what you might be seeing, if you're at least looking at me and what I'm holding up here is the uh, LED strip, which is blue, and then the motherboard over here, which is actually green. So here's uh, just an example of a little bit of a snafu that you can get into when you're connecting RGB LED strips, which is it's not standardized. You have, again, RG and B, but those are sometimes switched, flip-flopped around. It's not necessarily gonna cause a huge problem or fire anything if they get switched, although the 12 volts is, of course, very important. Make sure the 12 volt always goes into the 12 volt plug. But it just means that the motherboard's trying to say, hey, make it green, but it's got green and blue switched around, so it ends up being blue. Uh, the way you can combat this is actually via adapters. 
such as this one that ships with cable mod uh, LEDs that are made uh, to work with ASUS motherboards. And this actually flips a couple of the wire leads in there so that the motherboard's output corresponds with the input that's being expected by the LED strip. Now these new LED strips uh, from Cable Mod actually have five connection points. Again, one for the 12 volt, that's just providing power, and then R, G, B, and W. And that fifth lead coming out there controls the uh, other LED. And you actually might notice here, uh, these are completely different LEDs. There's actually two 50-50 LEDs on this strip that are side by side. One is RGB with three diodes in it, and one is just a single strong white LED which only does white because uh, you may have noticed if you've ever done anything with uh, RGB LED boards in the past, that when you try to represent all white, which I will attempt to do here very briefly, like so, um, you notice it's not the same color. In fact, this has potentially a little bit of a blue tint or maybe even a little bit of a green tint, depending on how colorblind you may or may not be. And it just doesn't look as clean or as bright as it should. So for that reason, uh, you can get these strips, which are RGBW, and then the software actually, uh, at least in the advanced section for Gigabyte's RGB Fusion software here, allows you to go down here and individually control just the uh, header that's coming out. So um, one thing you can do here is actually calibrate it, um, which is pretty useful. If you don't have that little adapter, you can tell it that no, the center one should be blue and, and this one should be green. So flip flop those around if you're not getting the right color out of your connected uh, RGB strip that uh, the motherboard is trying to say. But then here you can also tell it to enable the white LED as well, which I have turned on. You can disable the white LED, so it's just only gonna use the RGB ones. If you want more consistency, like for example with our Aorus motherboard here, also has RGB LEDs on it, but no white ones. So if we wanted everything to match up there a little bit more clearly, we could. Or you can tell it just do the white or UV only, um, which is nice if you wanna have the versatility to turn off all the RGB ones, but keep the white ones on just to have, you know, if, if you want a Christmas time, you know, white Christmas theme or something like that. Uh, you have that flexibility to be able to do that. Now, one other thing I noticed uh, as I was setting up for this is that you can actually take an RGB LED strip here and you can connect it up uh, to just the four pins on the end of this five pin RGB plus W strip. And as long as I get that correct, you can actually extend that a little bit. Now, most uh, RGB strips are gonna have a limitation on how many of these you can actually daisy chain after these. Uh, I believe the cable mod strips here are limited to three meters in total. So bear that in mind, you can't infinitely connect these up, but it does give you that option. However, uh, one caveat here that I should point out is that um, again, if you have flipped values like right now, it's trying to t be green, but this one has the green and the blue flip-flop, so it's blue instead. So it's not always gonna work 100%, but I did think that was kind of fun that you could connect up both of those. So if I'm getting back to the main point of this video, what is the actual trouble with LEDs that I'm talking about? Well, the main trouble with RGB LEDs, in my opinion, is the fact that although you can have a wide range of colors, up to 16 million if you believe the marketing hype, and yes, you can send a signal to all the RGB LEDs to potentially represent 16 million different colors or 16.7 million, but really the subtle changes as you would just say one level, level of brightness on one of those diodes isn't really that significant. The main issue that I have though is uh, something that you might have spotted in uh, the system that I have set up behind me, which is also RGB, uh, but is set to white, is that white is never really white as it should be. There's always sort of some other color bleeding into it because these LEDs can't display just white. It's a combination of red, green, and blue. So it always has kind of a bluish tint or potentially a greenish tint. Now, I also wanted to point out as I'm giving some praise to Gigabyte for including this capability on their re most recent series of Z270 motherboards, I'm also gonna offer some critique because um, consistency amongst your uh, lighting in your case is probably gonna be important to you if you've at least taken enough consideration to think, I want my case to be lit, be lit up. So consistency with lighting I think is important. Having this connection I think is useful in that particular respect, but also a critique where critique is due. Even the LEDs on this motherboard itself aren't necessarily all in uniform uh, with each other. So there's a highlight up here across the Aorus logo, for example. There's one down here by the Soundcore 3D. Uh, and there's other LEDs that are scattered throughout the board. 
On the software, if you go over here to the advanced section, uh, you can go to peripheral devices, so not just the main board and controlling all the individual uh, parts there, as well as the RGB header, but also the peripheral devices that can be connected up and all synchronized and controlled with this software. So you might notice I have a Gigabyte uh, Extreme Gaming graphics card on here. Uh, VGA control is also available. Um, these are grayed out because nothing's connected, but you can also have uh, control for DDR memory. There's RGB DDR memory coming out, CPU fan case, keyboard, mouse, and headset, so you can really synchronize everything up together. The other thing that I wanted to give them huge props for and this is a shout out to those of you guys who are like, RGB LEDs suck. Look at that single button. Turns everything off. And that's what I like about the new class of RGB products that have come out, at least in the PC market, is you have the ability to like, on a day when you're feeling happy and, and joyful and, and you want an RGB rainbow going throughout your entire computer, you can do that. Or on other days when you're like, you know what, I just need to get some shit done turn them all off and uh, you can give yourself a much more subdued look. Or maybe you just like when you go to bed at night and you have your computer in your room and you want things to be a little bit darker and not have a light show going on while you're trying to sleep. But anyway, guys, that is gonna wrap it up for this video. It's been a learning experience for me as I've been testing out different varieties of RGB LEDs. My uh, final goal, a little bit further down the line, is to get systems set up uh, with the Gigabyte software, the MSI software, as well as the ASUS software, and give a little bit more of a comparison. But all of them are being developed sort of on the fly. They're there's updates to lots of them, but it's nice to see it being a little bit more featured, uh, full featured, a little bit more fleshed out. And uh, yeah, but anyway, thanks again for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. I've got more videos coming out soon. I'll post some links to this uh, hardware I've been showing off here down in the description. And uh, there's links to my store down there too if you want to check out shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and help support my channel. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.